A very, very good late afternoon from uh, rainy Belgium. I'm very happy to host tonight's webinar uh, with uh, a speaker that is part of the Selma project and uh, he is a real expert on the field that he is presenting, social and emotional learning. It is Ken Coris, as you can see here on this slide, he is uh, the online safety director of Southwest Grid for Learning. And uh, so I'm very happy that uh, he will uh, be the one to deliver this expert talk, uh, which will be uh, available from tomorrow on as a recording in the, the MOOC environment. So, Ken, um, if you want to introduce yourself uh, first, uh, briefly, and then I pass on the floor to you. Good luck with your presentation. I do. Ideally, thank you very much, Bart, and hello, everyone. It's a, it's a great opportunity to be able to talk to you about, about this particular subject that um, I've, I've, I've become very passionate about building these elements into a lot of programs that we've been working on recently, and Selma has been the, uh, the latest one. So it's great to have the opportunity to see so many of you from uh, all over Europe and the rest of the world. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name's Ken Korish. I'm Online Safety Director for Southwest Grid for Learning. Uh, Southwest Grid for Learning um, sounds very parochial, very, you know, you know, just in the southwest of England, but we're lead partner in the UK Safer Internet Centre. So we work across Europe with the other 32 uh, Safer Internet Centres as, um, as part of the InSafe network. My own background, I guess, like many of you, is in education. So I was a teacher and school leader for some 20 years and also to a, um, an advisor for a city uh, down in the southwest, uh, the city of Plymouth, which some of you may know. Some of you may even have visited that city, beautiful city. Um, and for the last sort of um, 10 years, I've been getting more and more involved with trying to drive cultural change with uh, online technologies and um, hence my involvement uh, with the Selma program. So thank you very much for all of you attending and hopefully this won't be too dry or won't be too long and uh, hopefully you'll have lots of questions at the end of it too. Okay, um, let's begin. The title of the talk, as you can see, sounds very dry. How can social and emotional learning drive a program of cultural change and it's important to sort of understand what's involved around all of those particular elements. So we're going to have um, a look at uh, first of all what SEL is, what it might mean to you and how it's defined, um, social emotional learning. Um, just a little heads up about where it's been used effectively in other programs that you may be familiar with and and also focusing on the things that what make it effective and how to implement it too and then we'll look at uh, why we've built an SEL lens or strand or focus into the Selma program so we're going to be focusing on those three things um, let's begin with looking at what SEL is you know if we're going to go back to when social and emotional learning and emotional intelligence first raised its head. It's, it's fairly recent, actually. You know, it was down to Daniel Goleman, and his, uh, who is an American psychologist, science journalist, who, who wrote uh, a book, Emotional Intelligence. And people latched onto this because I think, you know, if you think about the hierarchy of subjects that you teach, and that you work with children around. One of the really most important ones about how you develop behaviors that are going to support learning, but also their role in the world, very often there isn't a specific subject on that. You know, um, if, if we look at you know, personal health, social, moral education, they're low down the hierarchy. You know, they come a long way behind things like maths and science and language and all of those other things. And yet, you know, having the right social awareness and social approach is a key component of finding your way in the world. And so we've begun to see more and more schools focusing on structuring the way they guide children and young people 
and their behavior too. So essentially it was down to Goldman. And, um, and the model that tends to be floated up in front of people when we talk about social and emotional learning um, is this one. This is the Cassell model from 2017. And whilst it looks like a simple chart, actually it contains lots and lots of different elements. So there we have social and emotional learning at the center. And the two orange sections begin with the self. I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail about what these are. So it focuses on the individual and shaping the individual's uh, own awareness of their own emotions, but also the way they manage their uh, emotions for themselves. And then we look at the green section, which is once those particular skills are established within the self, we can look beyond the self into the wider social ecosystem and look at how we identify those particular key uh, uh, features of behavior in wider social groups and then also build into how we manage those things too. Um, w w uh, in this particular model and particularly for Selma, there's a, a, there's a, a, a particular additional strand within the Cassell model that talks about responsible decision making. For the Selma and the model that I'm going to talk about, we've incorporated that into the relationship skills section as well. Responsible decision making is rooted and sat amongst all of those uh, segments as well. If you look at the top, we see an oh, ever widening set of ecosystems. So whilst we have the self and the immediate social uh, within the middle, we then expand out into ever widening social groups. So we take the immediate environment, which is going to be uh, for an SEL program in school, it's going to be the school. But for an SEL program within, let's say, uh, a, 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 uh, a social group outside schools, we'll be looking at self and then, ho and then home and then immediate peers and then other social groups to which you belong and then society. And you can see here in, in this model, we start with the self, then out into the classroom, which is the next social group, then out into the whole school and then out into the wider homes and wider school community. And the focus around the Cassell model is in the first instance within the classroom about a very clear social and emotional learning curriculum with very clear and robust instruction. By the time we move out, you're beginning to affect change for the whole school. And I'll use this phrase a lot as we go through around whole school culture. And then finally out into the wider society that surrounds the school, family and community partnerships. So let's delve into just what a few of these things mean and what their particular use is when we apply them to things like hate speech. Um, let's start with self-awareness. You know, it's really, it's really um, unfair to ask children to be able to navigate their own emotions if we haven't given them the necessary words, vocabulary, strategy, to be able to describe and understand how they're feeling. So the self-awareness bit is, a young person's ability to do all of those things, to recognize your own emotions, to be able to label them and identify them, and to think about how they relate to the thoughts that you have and also other values, both for yourself, but also how you impact with your immediate environment and how they influence not just behavior generally, but your behavior. It's important for young people to be able to identify these, to be able to provide the right interventions to be able to change them and affect them later and also to develop a well-grounded sense of confidence in their own abilities confidence in their ability to be able to uh, to be able to recognize their emotions and to establish a sense of optimism and a growth mindset so that includes identifying their emotions accurate self-perception which is a very difficult thing to do it's a difficult thing for adults to do let alone uh, let alone children um, Recognize their own strengths, develop their own self-confidence to be able to express themselves and to increase their own self-efficacy. So it starts very much with the self and being aware of those emotions that emanate. And then we talk about if you can recognize those emotions in yourself, whether they're positive or negative, 
or low energy or high energy, how do you begin to manage them in a way that is productive? So to be able to regulate your own emotions. And around this time, we're talking about things like giving yourself uh, meta moments. So this is drawing on metacognition, giving yourself time to be able to assimilate and to be able to to process your emotions and where they're coming from, what they're linked to, and be able to apply the right intervention to regulate them. And particularly for hate speech, if you think about when we see something online, and particularly in the immediate environment of uh, an online hate situation, which develops very very rapidly because of technology most of the responses to hate speech or indeed the hate speech itself is very rapid nobody within those environments are given themselves enough time to be able to rationalize what's being spoken about and to be able to provide the right response so all of those things down below are around impulse control not jumping in you know online you've probably heard the term flaming and flaming is when uh, an argument uh, accelerates really rapidly over from something very, very little. It's a series of misunderstandings and things being taken at face value that then leads to very aggressive environments. You particularly see it on things like uh, YouTube. Uh, YouTube's not known for its communication mechanisms, but uh, you know all it takes on YouTube is for one person to say, I don't like this video. The next line down, somebody wants to kill his mother. You know, it gets out of control that quickly. So that impulse control, managing stress, um, having the self-discipline and the self-motivation to be able to um, manage those situations, setting yourself goals, and also having the organizational skills to adjust your own feelings are an important component too. And then we move on to social awareness. So being able to regulate and manage and recognize those things in yourself how do you apply that in different ways to the social situations in which you find and they are wide and varied you know when we say social we could be meaning any of those ecosystems so it could be your friend who sat next to you within a lesson that's a social situation it could be the group of friends that you hang around with at lunchtime or at break times it could be your football team it could be your instagram group it could be your online gaming group how do you begin to take the perspective of others and em empathize with others too there's a lot of talk isn't there around around empathy we hear this a lot and actually when you ask children about this they equate it with sympathy rather than empathy if they see someone in trouble they'll give them sympathy and their actions will be led from a wrong uh, from an incorrect perspective um, empathy as we all know is a very very difficult thing to achieve um, it's best described I think if any of you have read um, to kill a mockingbird by Harper Lee um, you'll remember the lawyer in the Atticus Finch who talks to his young daughter scout about um, an argument that had flared up on the playground and she'd got into a fight. And when she explained the argument, her father said to her, do you know what you need to do is before you respond, just go and stand in that person's shoes, climb inside their skin, look at what they're seeing from their map of the world. And that takes time and that takes perspective. Uh, to understand someone truly uh, needs a good listener, it needs uh, someone who appreciates diversity, diversity. It needs respect for others. It needs to hold back your own impulses and your own perspective to see something in, uh, uh, you know, from the point of view of somebody else too. And once you've developed those skills and managed to align them with your own self-awareness and self-management, you then have the challenge of being put into situations where you have to manage those relationships. So this is about your ability to, and particularly online relationships, to establish and maintain healthy and rewarding relationships, not relationships that are that just you enjoy, but by your presence and where you are, um, that they enrich others too. And to be able to move amongst 
really diverse individuals and groups. And, you know, this isn't just a nice thing to do. Somebody who can do that is held in high esteem online. So they get more benefits from the social interaction. If you think about in gamers uh, and in gaming environments online, those sort of people who constantly cause trouble are often kicked out of gaming environments because people want uh, to hang around with people who are fun, people who are constructive, people who they can collaborate with, people who can self-police, and people who are reliable. And so, you know, it, there are benefits for presenting that attitude within the online environment. Um, as, and, and also, too, if you are that sort of person, you are, by association, making yourself safer. You're less vulnerable the more effective you are in online groups. So, you know, we talk about online safety, but actually, and we talk about being nice online, but it's more than just being nice. It's being effective and being valued online, and that's different than just being nice. So, in this section, we talk about communication, social engagement, building relationships, and how to collaborate with others, you know? We, we live in an environment now where technology is allowed, as there are no barriers anymore. There are no cultural, physical barriers anymore. There are no geographical barriers. We can pick ourselves up from our cabin here in the rain, in Plymouth, in Devon, in the UK, and we can transport ourselves to any culture or language or geography that we want. And with that comes huge responsibility and a whole different set of cultural etiquette to learn. That can only really be successfully achieved if we begin to look at and to teach those particular relationship skills within a scheme. So when we, when we look at social emotional learning, we talked a little bit about ecosystems. And you know, most SEL programs will start with developing the self, the self-awareness and the self-regulation. And then it will move it through these different ecosystems. So you begin to learn to operate from a SEL perspective amongst your immediate peers, the wider social groups to which you belong, and then eventually to society. And by society, I don't necessarily just mean your own country and the cultural expectations and the stuff that you bring that's peculiar to your society. But I mean in terms of a global society, any society in which you can find yourself. And as we said before, in the terms of online technology, that can be, that can be massive. And two, when we're talking about SEL, this is not just kids being taught things. This is for everyone. You know, we talked about that idea. If you're going to change everything, if you're going to change the whole school culture or the culture of a community, then it's got to involve everyone. Everyone has to be aware of the same messages, uh, have to be singing from the same songbook. And so the professionals themselves buying into this and the surrounding homes and communities buying into this program are essential. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's just an island in a it'll just become an island of of sel within a wider sea of discontent and so bringing everybody in is is important now look i know the last few slides i've shown you are a huge challenge they are a massive challenge for us if you think of the workload that you currently have as a teacher to begin to have these things as part of your wider day, you know, it can look as though, well, where am I going to get time to do this? It isn't about making additional time. It's about taking the things that you already do and weaving expertly this stuff into the everyday things that you do. SEL can take place in a maths lesson, a science lesson, a humanities lesson, um, out on the sports field, in the playground, at a parents' evening, at a school event. If you've got that right cultural approach, these things become consistent messages that begin, that, that begin to change the culture. And when we're talking about online hate and that global culture, that's a culture too. So adopting an SEL lens on this, I think, has been very powerful for us. So 
where do we know in the past? So why are we using SEL? What's its track record? And where has it been used in the past effectively? Well, some of the programs uh, that we've seen uh, in Europe, particularly in the United States, so uh, the Olvaez program, some of you may be familiar with. Um, th this has been developed actually over the last uh, six to eight years, uh, originated in Scandinavia, but it's taken off in a lot of uh, US schools. And while it's linked to bullying prevention, it has SEL at its heart. A similar sort of program is the Kiva program uh, from Finland. And, and also, too, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to this program uh, that we developed as a European project prior to Selma. That's called Enable. I don't know how, ma uh, how many of you are aware of the Enable project. Um, the Olvaez program and Kiva programs are programs that you have to buy into. Enable is, uh, is a free program. You'll find it at enable.eun.org. That's enable.eun.org. And it's an anti-bullying program with SEL at its root. And the nice thing about these sort of programs is that if you're interested in developing peers to support this whole process, so to get children and young people, give them some ownership and sustainability around this, then um, the Enable program has a beautifully developed a peer mentoring program that could stand on its own if you wanted to, to develop peer mentoring within your own school or your own setting. Uh, and then um, there's a, a, a US program. So this program is called the Ruler Program. It's run by a Dr. Mark Brackett uh, at the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. And there's some elements of Ruler, some of the fundamental elements of Ruler uh, appear in the Selma program. That quadrant to the left of the word ruler is a really important quadrant. And uh, if you dig into the Selma materials, particularly the first ones associated with SEL and around the first themes, you'll find a really nice introduction to why that, um, that quadrant there of the red, yellow, blue, and green is an important way to map emotions. So, so, we, so we know SEL has a track record, even given that it only appeared around about 1995. In the programs that it supported, um, uh, even, even when it's used just on its own, we know that it, uh, there's a huge amount of research that demonstrates it, it has results. Um, but why would you use it? How would you implement it? So here's just five simple tips from an American program that I thought I'd share with you uh, around effectiveness. And, um, and let's start with the first one. So, Sometimes, you know, you look to other programs beyond your own country and, uh, you know, out there on the net to see whether the, those standards are written. In. And, you know, as I said before, there is the Cassell model, there's the ruler program, there's Kiva. But check whether your own country and the education, ministries of education within your own country already have defined SEL standards. Check. And if they have, they've been thought through and they've been... Um, localized for your environment. So first of all, check if your own country has those SEL standards through your own ministries of education or the organizations that support education too. This thing doesn't happen uh, quickly. It's uh, a slow burn. It takes a while to gather uh, in, uh, momentum. It's not something that you could come in overnight and just change everything. And it needs to start small. Uh, we often say, if you are looking at any of these SEL programs, Selma included, then start with a small section of the school community with a small number of staff. I think starting small and growing it slowly gives you much more firm foundations on which to build the, the rest that follows. And when it does follow, you've got to bring your staff along with you. And you will only get that if you have the right effective professional development to support those staff. And again, like children, it's unfair for staff to have to deal with a new um, initiative or a new strategy if you first of all haven't given staff the, the uh, you haven't empowered staff to be able to deliver that strategy. And again, it's the same as the initiative. Start it small with a small group of staff. Develop pockets of expertise and excellence that will grow too. Um, 
involving staff at every step of this and building the numbers of staff who are drawn in does a number of things. It gives ownership to the strategy. Um, some of the best intended intentions when people begin strategies are led by a champion. And all of a sudden, that one champion has to take on the whole school in terms of implementing the strategies. And whilst leadership is important, it's, it's, it's a real single point of failure because if that single champion who's driving everything for the whole school strategy, um, I don't know, gets another job, moves on, gets knocked over by a bus, the whole strategy falls in on itself. So the wider the ownership of the strategy, A, the more sustainable it is. Doesn't matter if people move in and out, that that's still stays uh, the same. And also to you're drawing on a wider body of professional expertise and disciplines to inform the project. You know, different people will be able to contribute different perspectives. And the final bit is the so what question. So you've got, so you've got an SEL program. So what? How do you know that it's making a difference? And you can only do that by assessing and reassessing as you go through. Because if it isn't working, some of the strategies that you've adopted uh, is aren't working, tweak them, change them, change them for something else. Don't buy into something that is already roadmapped because the strategy that you want to end up with has got to be pertinent, it's got to be customized, it's got to be relevant for your culture, your school. Okay, so um, SEL, how is it mapped in SELMA? Um, SELMA is, is an acronym. It stands for Social and Emotional Learning for Mutual Awareness. But SELMA itself, too, is an interesting name because it's the uh, SELMA is a town in Montgomery, Alabama. And uh, it was in SELMA back at the start, at the end of the 50s, start of the 60s, that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was stopped from crossing uh, a key bridge uh, by the National Guard. And they uh, sat down in the road and they made a peaceful demonstration. And it was a huge victory for them because the National Guard had nothing else but to make the way. And they continued their march all the way to, uh, to Washington. So Selma, you know, has a number of connotations. It's not only an acronym, but it has that association with that particular incident, with Dr. Martin Luther King, with the fight for, uh, for rights and uh, for ethnic rights, but also it's a bridge. And that bridge is, has the ability to be able to bridge across communities as well. So I'm not going to dwell too long on this. I'm just aware of the time. I'm coming up to my 30 minutes. But how it's mapped into Selma is, is like this. Now, if you, if you look down the left-hand side of that diagram, you'll see that we've developed the ecosystem model. So we've structured how Selma opens up and develops by looking at that uh, that e developing ecosystem. So we begin with the self and then we move into the peer and the social and finally finishing with society. So we have, we have a set of maturity levels that open up. Um, you can see we have three distinct blocks around social and emotional learning and there are those four categories of social and emotional learning but they're sat alongside uh, two others media literacy and citizenship when we're talking about online hate um, it's 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 important to be given the right strategies not only to understand what hate is but also to analyze that media to be able to dig down to find out what's being said who's saying it in what capacity who's it being driven by and then use those media skills to be able to produce something that in the citizenship section you are then going to use to disrupt. When we look at that in the concept uh, around, um, um, around Selma itself, we've picked up a hacking, this idea of hacking as a concept. Now, hacking you hear all the time, and most people associated with, I don't know, breaking into the Pentagon in the US and stealing state, state secrets. It isn't. Hacking is a collaborative thing. So it's groups of people. It uses technology and it's deeply democratic. It's about identifying something, a problem, analyzing it, creating something, and then disrupting it. 
and applying it for the ben for the greater benefit. And that's the important part of Selma. Selma isn't just about those, uh, you know, appreciating what hate speech is and being able to recognize it. We want people to do something about it. So we developed a hacking model. And uh, I'm not going to go through all this because this maps to those things. But those first two bits about being able to identify issues when they arise and acknowledge the impact that those issues cause are SEL. They are SEL components. The exploring and understanding bit, that's media analysis. The creating potential solutions is media production. Applying and disruptive citizenship and changing the ecosystem positively. And that ecosystem can be as big as you want or as small as you want. As I said, it could be the two people that you play Minecraft with online, or it could be the whole of the nation. And that is a huge challenge. But we're seeing it, that agency and that amplification of voice happening right now. When you look at the experience the exponential rate that um, the climate change uh, 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 lobby have had through people like Greta Thunberg. There's a young girl and a group of young people who have amplified their voice. They've been through this process that we've got in front of us. They've identified and acknowledged, explored and understand, created solutions and applied them to be able to disrupt it. We've seen it too in... Um, We've seen it too with the Parkland Academy ch uh, young people. So do you remember Parkland Academy in the US where there was that awful uh, a gunman broke in and, 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 and shot children, young people? Um, there was a huge number killed. That academy rose up using exactly this hacking method to take on the National Rifle Association of America. So this stuff is possible if given the right strategies. And if there's one thing children know about, it's the use of technology to amplify their voice. So if you're interested in looking at the SEL components of this, um, I'm, I'm sorry, there's the nine, three, uh, the nine themes. The first four are about self. The next three are about um, a social, wider community, peers and social. And eight and nine are about society. You can see theme nine, real challenge, change the world, even in a small way. So. If you're interested in going to find SEL resources, first of all, dive into the Selma Toolkit, hit the Toolkit button, and hit Resources. And what you'll see down the left-hand side is a set of filters. You can filter it by theme, or you can filter it by focus. I've chosen focus, and I've just gone and clicked on the social and emotional learning components of the Selma model. And that will then return to you in the Toolkit just all of the activities, and there are 100 plus activities uh, within the whole toolkit, it will just bring back for you the SEL component. So, you know, it's, it's a direct jump into getting some content to begin to try. Doesn't have to be done in order. You can just go and cherry pick the ones that you want to go and adapt, to change. You can have, uh, uh, it brings you the questions you want to ask. Uh, it will give you the assessment criteria. It will give you instructions on how to run the activity itself. If it were me, I'd be diving in just straight away, ignoring most of the, most of the other content and just going to uh, play around with those resources. And when you see something that resonates with you, uh, go and access it. Go and get the information from it that you need. Uh, print off the slides or use the slides live and go and have a play and see whether you can begin to um, to see whether you can go and begin to uh, use those for children. Sorry about that. That's my phone. Uh, our final slide. Look, if you need a little bit more hand holding on the front page, we have a set of pathways. And here's the one that I've chosen, pathway three. This is for educators new to working with an SEL approach. And what we've done is this document's a lot longer than the little
snapshot I've taken on screen here. We've guided um, so people who are new to this and need just a little bit of guidance. All, Ken, I want um, to thank you, of course. Uh, we've this, taken uh, you through talk. that pathway there, and I you'll think, find uh, that on the front page uh, of Selma. Right, I've gone over my time by seven minutes. I'm really so sorry for that because all of you are very uh, hanging on chapters. there late in the day. You've got uh, children at home that need uh, feeding, dishes that need washing, I know. So I'm happy to take any questions about any of the areas that I've spoken about. Perhaps. Bart, you could help me here and, in the and lead Selma through books. this. I have been um, a cherry picker, as you called it. Uh, so I uh, um, presented some of the activity, but in the number uh, week number four, which will open on Monday, I will uh, uh, bring uh, the audience to the toolkit, and then uh, we will put that in the spotlight, and then uh, we will uh, share the, the approaches that you also uh, shared with us uh, briefly already. So uh, that uh, talk of you came uh, in, in the right uh, timing. Uh, OK, I will um, have a look at uh, the chat line here to see whether uh, the questions come up. So please go ahead. Uh, if you want to ask the nice speech, uh, speaker a question, uh, please type it here. So um, it was um, not tiring, uh, very educative. Uh, so that's uh, one remark you have already. Uh, that's great, um, but a question would also be uh, very nice. Uh, so I see people oh, yes. typing now, so let's uh, uh, wait a few more minutes. And then um, please, uh, if you have a question, type it down. So I, I, I see some of the ones, uh, some of our colleagues from uh, Germany uh, are here too. If you are in uh, Germany, so that's uh, uh, Anka and, uh, and Andrea. I think I can see in the list. Um, the German, uh, uh, so uh, the German Safer Internet Center have um, uh, clicksafe.de have embraced this whole project and they're putting it at the heart of um, of, of of a lot of their interventions this year. Um, they have um, so we've translated uh, all of the activities into now I've got to think about this Greek, uh, Danish, and German. But the uh, our German colleagues have gone a step further and translated all of the content into German. So if you're from Germany uh, and you're working in German schools, it's a great opportunity to go and get this directly in your own language and for German students to work on question, these activities Ken, uh, within read, their own uh, language too. From, from those of you from other countries, says, uh, if once you've explored you these the activities, you think it's something that we, you would in like in your own language, there is a contact form on the Selma website. Go and talk to the Selma team at uh, European School Net who will um, who'll guide you through the process and give you some information about what's required to get the activities translated into your into your own language too. Oh, very much so. So, um, so uh, it it's interesting when we did pilot. Um, when we did pilot uh, groups on some of the first activities, um, what we found with children and young people, and some teachers actually, uh, and and some adults with whom we worked, who also worked with children, um, people found it very 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 difficult to tie down what hate speech was, and to separate it out from other online aggressive behaviours like. Um, like bullying or trolling or harassment or just general negative behaviors like arguing. Um, the gender component of it is, is clearly um, uh, referenced in the first theme. So the first theme focuses on trying to understand hate speech and it 
it looks at protected characteristics. So Marie Louise is asking around uh, protected characteristics. Now I know protected characteristics from a legal point of view vary from country to country, but we've we've defined them within the Selma project as the obvious ones, and within that, it's it's not just uh, uh, gender on its own, but uh, LGBTQ, uh, uh, the, and I've also included. Um, you know the, the the stuff around gender choice as well. So uh, yes, so so gender is uh, it is is part of that. It sits alongside other um, uh, protected characteristics, the obvious ones like ethnicity, race, um, uh, uh, yeah, etc. But um, we've we've tried in the first activity not to focus too much on specific hate speech aimed at specific uh, protected characteristics. So what the one thing we can't share in, 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 the, in the resource is the actual hate speech itself, because for many it's illegal, so we can't be writing all sorts of stuff and saying this is hate speech. Okay, well, what okay. we've gone it down is uh, to try and understand the principles of it. So in some of the first um, and some of the yeah, first I mean, introductory slides, time, we talk about this alien by, whose by name is Zorg. Role. He's a Zenobian. Is, uh, and whilst that might seem babyish, actually, when we gave that to and older students, they actually got the, the, the principles around hate speech, around uh, making comments about characteristics that somebody can't change. It's part of their uh, nature as well. So, so yes, gender. And it is referenced. And it's also referenced in other in other themes later on as well. Right. I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, Th Thekla, that's a great question. Um, you know, and um, and uh, you know, if we go back to the start of it, we we, we talk about um. So, so what are the priorities? And you know, all right. So we know priorities are about passing exams because the more students that pass exams, the more successful the school is. But it's making a business case. We know school achievement increases significantly in schools where there is a culture of supportive um, and um, and ethical behaviour. There's your business case. You know, you, you can't get buy-in from students and you can't get achievement from students if the environment is negative. Create a positive environment, there's lots of positive outcomes for that. Staff have a higher morale. Staff have a higher morale. They okay, want to come to work in here. schools where the behavior um, is good. Um, and if staff have a higher morale, they're more effective at doing their work. They're more effective at doing their job. Parents want to send their children to schools where the behavior is of a high standard. So what's and as soon as you get that buy-in, as soon as you make that business case, why would it not be in the interest of a head of a school to invest in that part of the program to even drive achievement higher? That's my own view. Yes. So, Anka, start small. Yeah. So, go on. Yeah. So, what's the best way to start in school? Uh, with a few interested colleagues, with a few interested students, or both groups together? And because it happened to some of my yeah yeah okay. So, um, I I would say I would say it works best when you work with colleagues who are associated with one particular cohort of children. So don't try and change the whole school. Begin with a cohort. And I would say, you know, work with a cohort, perhaps you've just come in if you're in a primary if you're in a secondary school, start with the cohort who've just come in from primary. Uh, and the colleagues who surround and support those children, start with them because they're your fresh clean okay, slate. Perfect. I think and we have to, if you're um, successful in establishing that, here, as they um, work their way through will, the school, uh, that will rub off of all, as they progress. Uh, recording here, and maybe we can see whether we can stay here for a few more minutes. Start with a so group that you, you can uh, affect the most. Ken you know, perhaps again, not start then, uh, off with I'll the students who've been there the longest or the troublesome students. Uh, start